Hello, this is the October 11th Jail and Zones call. So far we have Dan, Dave, Goran, Antronik, Anthony, myself, Michael, others will probably trickle in. And uh, Anthony, do you have anything to report or update us with? Otherwise we'll kick off to Goran, who's been working away on EnviList things. Not at the moment, I think I'm good, thanks. So, uh, Goran, how are things going? You had some exciting things last call. So, well, to give people who watch this later a bit of context, um, EnviList is a really cool structure uh, if you want to message from one process another or the kernel or the kernel towards the process. So the messaging structure is great, but once you use it for storing, it shows it's not really designed to be used that way. So what I was using, uh, what I was uh, implementing and still am is uh, because this is a name value list, it's implemented using a linked list or a tail queue set of macros in FreeBSD. Uh, <clears throat> I call my structure NV3 because it uses RB underscore whatever set of macros, which is basically a binary tree. It's uh, more ex post than envy list because the idea is that you can store and edit values in it and well do whatever management you want which is totally wrong for the messaging uh, and why envy list is uh, wrong in uh, in the role of uh, storing data is because it's made to, to convey a message, not to store your data. Well, storing not so much, but editing is a pain. Uh, <clears throat> so I'm using a tree-like structure to, uh, well, mentally maybe best you can picture a JSON. And I am trying to implement a structure uh, that can store JSON. So almost any kind of data can be stored with it. And uh, uh, on the contrary to Envil list, it's really more exposed. So you can touch elements, you can change them, and you can, uh, well, let's say your foot is bigger. So the chance of shooting it is bigger. <laughs> uh, but it's intentionally that way uh, because why, why we need it? Well, I will argue that we need it for jail is to store, uh, well, any kind of data. We started with uh, how about configuration, but ultimately it won't stop you from, uh, I don't know, Putting a really small PNG in there if you're really crazy. But yeah, that's not wise, but you can do it. Anyway, it can store any kind of data. Uh, and currently, I implemented only what the kernel side of EnviList supports. That means that Envil list, when in user space, supports, for example, file descriptors which processes can exchange. But kernel side doesn't know about that because it cannot exchange file descriptors that way. That's at least my understanding of it. So why? Why all over the what's the problem with EnviList is that if you want to edit a value, you have to delete the old value and add a new one, which is especially annoying for uh, arrays because it changes order. Your newly added attribute or NV pair is going to be less. And uh, I thought it would be really nice to have, oh yeah, uh, by the way, I contacted Pavel and Marius 
I think they work with Envy list the most. This so, is true. <clears throat> uh, yeah, and okay, what is the do we have something to recommend to people? And by people, I mean me. Uh, when you're dealing with annual list, uh, what what can you do? I mean, what can you do to store it? Because it's clumsy to edit by removing and adding and so on. Uh, I will get uh, just in a, just a minute why I think we need it for the jail parameters. But let's stick with with this. For a second, so the, <clears throat> basically Marius uh, responded with, "Well, look, we really don't have a structure that is readily made for MVLS to be stored." So I thought, "Okay, how about I create some tree-like uh, structure?" Uh, Jan suggested tail Q and RB uh, for the implement. Sorry for the implementation and it worked out great. And the only uh, quirky thing, well, to me, I never used Union before with some with something meaningful. So this was the first time that they used Union in C to represent value. Uh, that means Union in C is um, kind of weird because all your variables inside the structure are residing one by the other, uh, uh, side by side. In Union, they are overlaid on top of each other. If we would have a mental picture, that would be as, like you have 46 bits. And in those 46 bits, they're somehow magically eight pointers to different data structures. Okay. And uh, it's a way to, well, save space is one thing, but uh, it's not the, the main thing. Okay. The main thing is if I add uh, another pointer in the future to some new uh, data structure or a primitive type or whatever, or, well, whatever I add, uh, it's just going to remain 64 bits wide uh, because the variables were stacked on top of each other. Again, a way to more easily shoot yourself in the foot. Uh -huh. But, uh, but it's, uh, it's made to be uh, uh, easily uh, foot suitable. <laughs> um, okay. I mean, the, the, the part with editing, the, the requirement to edit kind of is requirement for you to have more control. And more control means more stuff you, that, there's, that can go wrong. Right. So that was intentional. It's not the, uh, how to say, Oops, this happened. I knew that's going to happen. And that's the, that's the decision. Uh, that was made in the design uh, at the store. Yeah, it's going to be a little bit uh, easier to shoot yourself in a foot that it's going to store the envy list somewhat naturally for editing. And okay. it has pack and unpack function, yep. which are um, envy list has two forms. One form is pack, one is unpacked. Unpacked is what we use as a C struct and uh, variable in it and so on. Packed is just array of bytes. Uh, it can be converted from one to another. And what I'm implementing is pack and unpack for the my structure called m tree that will, once I uh, satisfy all the tests, it will get uh, the same array of bytes as Envilist does to, to pack and unpack. So <clears throat> first I thought, how about creating a structure that will just store the data? But that means I will have to convert it to Envilist, then convert it to array of bytes, then send it to from kernel to user space or vice versa, it doesn't matter. Uh, it was a lot of waste uh, in between. So I started working on 
pack and unpack, and I'm not sure as it uh, it's a good thing for the programming community. It's a kind of bad thing for for my nerves right now because okay. I'm literally mincing bits. Okay. How can this group help you at this stage? And how would you describe the state of your proof of concept? Um, well, the first, the first answer is you can, unfortunately. I wish you okay. can. Okay. But somebody has to dig in, and that somebody is me, uh, and make the pack and unpack work. And that, that's going to be good. Okay. Yeah, I also made it work in the kernel space and the user space, and I discovered uh, the tests in FreeBSD and how to debug tests. That's good. a really cool feature. Okay. Uh, so there's a lot of sometimes, or it's easier to write tests in C++, and then if you just import C, uh, it, it doesn't work. There's hmm. something, a bit of a long story, blah, 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 C++ and name mangling, uh, which C doesn't do. And then you discover little things like begin declaration and end declaration, which kind of magically sorted out. Okay. And when, when inside the kernel, there are different headers which you need to include to get something like bool. Boolean variable. Okay. Uh, it was a journey of discovering how to write the uh, user and kernel space library, which is, uh, I may add, a newly discovered love of my life. If a library works in a user space and kernel space, yeah, the, it, it's magical that by running the test in a user space, you're testing a part of kernel. That's I mean, a good point. That, that, that's totally, uh, I don't know. I, I call myself Gandalf for the hour. <laughs> okay. Are those QA tests like K-E-Y-U-A? Yes. Okay. That's a whole topic that might be appropriate at some point. K-E-Y is a bad one for QA, quality assurance, but misspelled. Yeah, it's a. I keep saying Kiev, Ukraine, but it's not. It's it's a crazy spelling, but that's what they gave yeah. it. Uh, any questions for Goran? You you you're mentioning tests. I I, I think you're writing tests like I, I can't think uh, I can't think of the right word for it. Uh, block tests? No. Um, Unit tests. Okay. Basically, you're, you're creating tests to make sure the code works. Yes. That's brilliant. Well, we have that in, uh, uh, well, a bit of a history. Uh, NetBSD implemented it. And it's called ATF. And I'm just guessing it means a testing framework. Uh, so it was imported from NetBSD. And it has shell C, C++, and I'm not sure if any other languages for it for testing, and uh, I personally heard of QA and ATF uh, from Christoph Provost, and we have tests for firewall. That was like, what? And, but w when, you, when you look at the uh, uh, slideshows, uh, he usually starts to uh, VNet jails and does whatever is needed to be done uh, in the test. And if the test fails after a timeout, then ping failed and the block works, right? So something like that. Before I forget, Goran, have you seen PJD's, uh, I think it was Open ZFS Developer Summit video and recording about um, his use of NVLIS at uh, Fudo Security? No, but now I will have to. Yeah, do take, make a quick look. I looked at what seems to be one giant 2022 video and I didn't quite see him, but it also looked like the second day. So go ahead and uh, I'm sure within four videos from last year and the year before, you'll find that. 
if not maybe reach out to him but he's like we 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 fell in love with envy list so there is a time and place for that definitely uh welcome jamie uh, and but for uh, pf state ex uh, exporting and uh, lists are just the wrong uh, yeah. interface sorry what for uh, exporting a million or so over 10 millions of uh, firewall states and v lists are just uh, the wrong uh, serialization format yeah but we don't care because it's merged the the net link and pf states are merged yes and you have written a low level interface to the old uh, system call abi instead of going through the pf because it should maintain API compatibility. It's just that you have to use libpf. Go ahead yeah, and reach out wonderful. offline as needed on that. It sounds like there are architectural questions that we might not be able to address here. Oh, it's just a heads up. Um, what happened is that PF is now using netlink to get states, which means that the Cisco can be chopped up into smaller chunks so that user space can start processing the data while kernel is still generating them. So you don't, as a user space, you don't have to uh, wait for the kernel to generate the whole list to, to start doing whatever you want to do. The important part is that the kernel end user then never have to store the full list as a copy of a state table to send so they can stream it. Cool. Anything else regarding that? It's literally a commit from yesterday, so probably not. Cool. And that's uh, in that um, repo or somewhere name? else? I did look over the FreeBSD Netlink code because I considered writing my own Netlink generic family for FreeBSD for the state uh, notification stuff. And while it's vastly underdocumented, the, I found the Linux interface specification and so on and looked about how it's designed. And I have to admit that it is a surprisingly well-designed protocol. Um, the idea is that once you're in the Netlink generic layer, basically you uh, have a type length value encoding and you can have optional values added or not present. Basically you have a potentially nested list of tags. So it's a lot more efficient and more optimized for the common use case of having mostly flat values in there but you can still extend it. Yeah. So it is a quite useful interface to have for things which an ioctal wouldn't really uh, support well because an ioctal basically only works for a fixed size message and one at a time. Here you can really stream it, which is useful for things like what uh, Christoph and Alexander did. Cool. I know Antrenig is multitasking with another call, but oh. Antrenig, if you have any questions, chime in. <laughs> he might be able to break free. So the problem why I didn't look further is that I haven't found a lot of documentation on how to add your own family uh, to the FreeBSD net. Uh, link stuff and especially how to do access control and how to cross between VNets because the state synchronization stuff I'm working on should really be accessible across jails uh, which is the um, advanced stuff for this kind of kernel side code whereas uh, using unique sockets I can just piggyback on what's already there Cool. Anything else on that? Or shall we give Jamie the floor for any updates you happen to have? Um, I will take the short, 
floor for a very short time. Please. No updates. That was very short. Um, are you open to working with uh, release engineering on simply a list of new features in 14, notably dot include? Ah, yes. Gentle nudge. <laughs> yeah, I haven't, uh, I, I should put something in for that. Cool. Is there anything else besides the includes really? Uh... We got that Mac uh, GSOC project in. Remember the 2009 one that was stalled mm -hmm. and he joined a few calls and cleaned up the manual page and that might be worth noting. As in what mandatory access controls was it? I know Dave was interested what? in that one. What was that about the IP addresses? Yeah, I'm not familiar with that. Oh gosh. Um let's I'll try to look back on the doc, but it's long enough that that can be a nightmare. Um G S O C. Uh it was what, a um Mac IPA uh, IPL framework added so, um, to uh, prevent changing IP addresses inside jails, among yes. other things. But anywhere okay. just happened to apply to jails as well. So uh Mac IP ACL allow as a mandatory access control kernel module and once loaded and configured it controls per vnet which uh, ip addresses uh, this vnet is allowed to have configured so basically the kernel will refuse to let you configure any new ip addresses violating the loaded policy this yes. review and if I'm not mistaken. And I believe that, let's see, closed. And it was, I hope closed with a commit. Yes, it is. Pretty sure, but okay. Pretty uh, sure, yeah. So for what it's the, worth, that uh, could go in there and edit a commit, boom, uh, added by Bjorn. So Lee. the module is loadable on my 14 point zero beta five test machine. So the kernel module was included. Okay, cool. I don't know about any documentation updates, but. Uh, which I guess this would be a great place to. Uh, no, the main page is there that. as well. Okay. Uh, so the limitation to watch out for is that the Mac IP ACL only applies once it has been configured. So if you already have the violating IP address, um, configured, it doesn't revoke it. So basically, make sure that you apply it in the right order. Okay, Load the module, anyone... apply the policy to the jail, then assign interfaces to it. You feel that should be in the docs? Uh, I think it is in the main page. page. At least it okay. used to be. Okay, cool. It's just that you have to understand what it says uh, because it doesn't spell it out too explicitly. Yeah. Okay, any other topics for to mention in 14 release regarding jail? And totally off topic, Jan, I'm wondering if we should nudge, say, John and Mark about your tap regression. I don't like the fact that feel that's free to tap uh, to tap, uh, tap on a shoulder to uh, get some attention to this because I think uh, it's more useful if a first party brings attention to it. Yeah. Damn, these calls are recorded. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, what? So yeah. Yeah, if someone else. Uh, Pushers then this may get a more favorable look than uh, if I just uh, keep poking. <laughs> cool. Okay. So uh, I was busy with other things, so I didn't uh, uh, haunt uh, Bjorn any further. Understood. Dave, if you're back, I know you had some visions for CI and projects and... Oh, yeah. State machine um, and all the things. Do you want a moment to share your latest observations and thoughts and projects? Yeah, so a, a little recap where I'm at. Nothing usable to the point of showing to people yet. Um, 
on the CI side, what I've been building is um, a thing that receives a message. Um, we don't care where at the moment. Um, spawns a jail, forks, create the process inside the jail to do whatever thing we want, and then streams the output back over web, web sockets. And that is in the works for my level of C, but now needs someone who's more competent. So I'm underway with um, with Faris for that. And um, on the other side, um, I've been fiddling with Lua um, in in in, um, in in base, so the Flua, to see if I can make a little jail, a jail demon. All it really needs to do is output um, a subset of the information that we have um, from the um, JLS dash dash libxo JSON command um, at the moment. That's sufficient. And the only thing that I found with that that's of interest for the call, at least, is um, the basic stuff works. That's that's pretty straightforward. However, there are two bits of jail information that we have when the jail is created that we don't see afterwards. Um, one of these is that the versions, um, what am I trying to say here? Some variables that are passed in the jail instantiation call are only exposed, as, at least as far as I can see, um, as kern sys controls inside the jail. Um, maybe that's something that rings a bell for Jamie, if you, if you understand what I mean. Um, and uh, not on the host? What a, so the OS version and OS release date? Stuff like that. Yeah, I'm not specifically sure which one it is. Um, the UUID is another example like that. They're exposed as um, sys controls inside the jail. Beyond? But from outside, I can't seem to see them at all. From outside the jail? Yeah, so um, for example, I mean, what we they, wanted... You can see them as jail parameters, right? Um, but not all of them. So this might be just a limitation of the jails command, JLS. Uh, yeah, generally uh, everything, I mean, there are some things that are not really parameters that are treated like parameters by the jail program. But usually there are things like, you know, the ID of the start shell or, you know, the start program, something like that. Most things get set just as traditional jail parameters. Yeah, I'm trying to think. So when I do the LibXO output, I see, for example, CPU set name is an active path host name, IPv4 addresses, IPv6 addresses, but I don't see the other records. Um, that count UID. That should be like host dot something. Yeah, exactly. Um, Dave, do you have a sample of the LibXO output if it's not too huge? Um, no, I can do that here. Let's um, let's just do this here. Let me get rid of so, that. So um, I won't. I don't need to post all of it because it's it's obvious okay. after the third. But basically, the question is: Are these? Is it just that the jails command doesn't know about it and can't display it, or is it? Um, um, let me just do one thing at a time here. Let's do the copy paste. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. It's a bubble right. Uh, there we go. There we go. And we've only got a couple there. There we go. Um, there's an example in chat there. Yeah. So when you create a jail, there's a whole bunch of opera and um, things like UIDs and so forth that we want to be able to see um, from the outside, yep. from the demon sort of end. And I don't know whether the kernel knows and it's jails that's the problem or whether it's um, the kernel doesn't expose that. If I were to go to the jail, I would see the UID. Um, um, where's one of these jails here? There's a huge, huge stop. There we go. Whee! Lots of parameters. Yeah, all of those things that we said, all the parameters, status, all of that sort of stuff. That was just a moment. Yeah. Yeah. So, for example, if I'm inside the jail, I get to see that. Um, 
but I don't see that from the outside. You get to see what the IP6 address? So. Oh, I, I see okay. the IPv6 address because that's that, that's in the in the JSON blog. But inside the jail, I can see oh, yeah. the host ID, for example, but it's not visible um, there. Oh yeah, in, inside the uh, so yeah, yeah. So let's see here. Yeah, that's um, uh, it's got to be a problem with lib libxl because if you do JLS in you know say JLS dash s and just give it you know a bunch of name equals value space separated things, then you see it. So libxl is not getting it for some reason. Why? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Somebody uh, added the libxl on and it wasn't me. <laughs> I vaguely correction of of seeing it previously. So the last time I looked, I was kind of surprised. Going, was it always like this? Um. So let's just go man jails. Could it uh, be that uh, these have been added since uh, libxo has been added and libxo's invocation was never updated to uh, format the new parameters? That should not uh, be something that is hard coded in libxo. That should be pulling the pr current parameter no, list. The JLS command has to basically invoke libxo with the right parameters and if only the some commands use libxo only for structured output and use their existing code for the human readable output and if the human readable output has been added but the structured output hasn't been updated to account for the new uh, variables then uh, JLS wouldn't know how to basically dump them because there is no reflection in C uh, which it could use to programmatically derive this. Okay, so I made a little bit of progress there. Um, from the outside, Libix, so, I mean, I don't care whether it's Libix or somewhere else. Um, it's just a matter of parsing stuff. Um, if I explicitly list the element, the um, whatever we want to call them, the elements, they're, they're um, shown. Either per jail or per element or both? Um, well, the OS release here, that's a little bit, I suppose maybe, the, are these really 15 current jails? I don't think so. Um, that's um, probably what I said too. That's right, if, I'm not thinking to myself. So oh, if I, you I, don't I mean, set them, uh, they get inherited from the um, base of the, basically the, yeah, yeah. the setting so, you're reading there, informs the system of what's the supposed maximum ABI version and not yeah. what is the installed user land. For that, you have to ask the user land, not the CCTL. Well, so I, I can get it like this now, but this is, I don't want to list all of them, it's just too much rubbish. Um, if I list them explicitly, like that. So uh, that, that's clumsy, but that's fine. Um, so that answers the question, does the kernel know about it? Yes. Does the jail command know about it? Yes. Does the jails command look it up properly? When you ask for all the information, no, but at least I know where the bug is. It's a user land problem here. I assume the problem is that basically people have written parsers for what JLS-V means, basically which fields are included. Yeah, well, and, it hasn't been and then it had to remain bug compatible, which makes total sense. Oh, uh, yeah, right. Not, right. not the JSON output, it's totally normal. Um, yeah, they get ignored. Yeah. And um, yeah, it may make sense to include more fields uh, if yeah. it's in XML or JSON output mode. Dave, I see you're piping always for JQ. Maybe you don't have to. Instead of LibXL JSON, you can use... I don't have to, stuff. but if you want to pipe it to a screen, it's much more readable to have it organized by lines. Otherwise, it's compact JSON. Um, Try to write JSON, comma, pretty. All right. Oh, really? I think that, that does the thing. All right. Yeah, it uh, doesn't yeah. get... You uh, syntax highlighting and stuff like this, but it does give you human. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I'm if you just throw the boots, it's going to work. I love it. Great. Do you have a quick sample, Dave? You can paste just even a few lines, like three it lines. It looks like exactly the same. Okay. <laughs> just with um, just But with you don't need JQ. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, oh, comma. Pretty. Yeah. Okay, cool. Nice. All right. Um, okay. Um, okay. Yeah. Now, now I see what the problem is. Thing. Okay. Go yes, ahead, Jimmy. Dash V is always a limited amount of fields predating libxo. Just, you know, here's a nice, pretty output. There, I would suggest dash S, which on its own just uh, gives a text dump of the fields in name equals value format. Yeah, but yeah. along with the one I used to use, libxo, I just dumps it dumps everything. Down. Yeah, I never wrote it down, and that's why I was going. It used to do it, and now it doesn't. Hmm. Awesome. So, I just use the S instead of the V, and it's all there. Awesome. Okay, good. So two things. Fantastic. Um, so that gives me almost everything I need. In fact, I think that gives me everything I need. Yeah. Probably the man page could use something in JLS uh, mentioning how it works with uh, LibXL. Yeah, I can do that. That'd be that'd be good. Um, good penance for my sins. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, it yeah. took. Four people in this call to figure this out. If you, so yeah, <laughs> yeah, the, well, we yeah did it in a few no minutes. kidding. Oh, you, oh, you're yeah. taking the credit now, Jan. I, we couldn't have done it without your help. It's true. <laughs> no, no, I didn't count myself in. Really, it's just really it. It already wasted this much time. Yeah, it's worth it. Yeah. Four people actively participating, not taking. Yeah. So it's funny you say everything you want. Because that's relative insofar as you beautifully made this this spreadsheet of features based on the call yeah. from a few months beautiful ago. Beautiful big way, beautiful big way. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, uh, Dave... Any news on that? Any updates? Any recent changes that we should consider? Think no, about. No, so I'm going to look at it next. But um, I think um, I'll take a chunk of them for next week and uh, and send them out to the list for for um for consumption. Okay. Um, and I think we should, um, we, as in, um, I'll add in all of the jails related people that we know of now, the ones we met at the conf, um, Luca, um, and a bunch of other people, and ask them specifically about the sort of demon thing. What's the stuff we want in there? What would be helpful? And um, try and get that, some yeah, consensus on that over the next few weeks. What are we in now? Um, by sort of mid November latest. Um, Oh, to make sure it's on there, there was the PID virtualization, which may help with Docker so that every jail can have PID 1, as I recall. Is that on there? I don't know. You can edit it if not. Let's take a look. Um, PID virtual. Okay. So, yeah, Bjorn Zeeb of all folks had a, a, a review from some time ago. Uh, so I will add that and do factor it to the right place as needed. Uh Ba, ba, ba. BZ at PID, PID, PID. Uh, review. That's it, that's it for me. I've got nothing else. Um, sort of awesome. Just those two things ideas, today. But, yeah. That's fantastic. I can't believe I've forgotten dash yes. <laughs> and all of those variables that I wondered where they went have all come back, Jamie. <laughs> it takes a village. <laughs> So, um, Dave, you mentioned a CI kind of setup. Uh, have you, and yeah. if you're writing it from scratch, uh, have you already uh, started using process descriptors to do the job supervision? Um, no, that might be something that's part because, of my skill. Um, uh, I'm not too worried about that stage of it yet. It was more the interface. Um, how does it work? How do we describe jobs? Um, can we move most of the configuration into Lua, which makes it much less, much harder to do things like leak memory and so forth. Uh, but PD4, I've not heard of this. Basically, it's a special uh, variant of a fork system call created for Capsicum, but oh, very yeah. cool okay. of it. And yeah. instead of the just the process ID, while outside of Capsicum, you still get that, 
what you also get is a file descriptor referencing mm -hmm. a newly created child process, uh, which can then be used to uh, watch for uh, to exit or other events using KQ because it gets ready. Yeah, um, I use KQ already just listening to yeah. like so a Unix socket a, on the inside. Yeah. There's an uh, KQ filter for this. Yeah. Proc desk. Um, where you can get the exit code and so on, if it exits. Oh, so you don't even have to de deal with anything in the signal handler context, uh, which mm -hmm. is also nice. And the other important part is that basically the zombie stays around until the last uh, process descriptor reference is dropped. So that you can use it using PDK, for example, to send signals to jobs exceeding their uh, runtime quota or something. Yeah. Uh, without having to be the direct uh, parent process be, uh, or risking race conditions because it's a capability, not a number or other identifier. Yeah. So it's okay, that a lot pretty handy. Yeah. Yes. And you can even send them across process boundaries and allow some other process to suddenly get notifications. So you can do wild things with file descriptor passing there. And the important part is that you can use it to get informed using. Uh, sorry, let me drop that into chat. And while you're at it, what's the name of the KQ filter? Um, Proc the something. Name, Proc desk. Proc Process yeah, descriptor. Description. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Um. And you get the node exit when the child process exited. And I think the data is the exit status or something like that. Or so um, you get what you would get if you do get a uh, do a rate uh, pit basically. Or wait, Eddie. Um... I think at the and... moment I could kill the entire jail if they run out of time. Boom. Hmm. Um, and there's also a. Uh, um... Uh, PD uh, kill system call yeah. uh, to uh, send a signal. Like this. And that way. Uh... Google. Oh, and closing the descriptor sends a sick kill to the child. Right, there's a number of different guns here. Excellent. Hmm. Unless uh, yeah, you said, more uh, guns? Um, yeah. unless there's also a, a PD demon mode where you have a process descriptor, but you want to treat it like a demon so that it can outlive you. But a CI uh, CD pipeline is definitely one, not one of those cases where you want a runner to outlive uh, the main process. But Jan, yeah. could I track the ridiculously simple uh, beehive scripts with such a thing? Um, like Damon, like... If you write it in C, you can. Okay. Uh, and that's the most elegant way of doing it. Basically, you could write a beehive management daemon or something like that. To, and it would be as easy to supervise one beehive process or 100 using this ABI. So yeah, what was the daemon thing you mentioned there? I don't, I don't find it. Um, in the fork man page, or uh, the yeah. so oh, I see PD daemon. Um, it's just right at the top, in fact. Exactly the flex yeah. you can set. The most interesting one is for um, it's the second one, the PD close exec, because uh, the kind of process you're describing is probably forking a lot and exacting and, uh, and you really don't want to accident uh, and you really don't want to close. and just setting the close exact flag on all file descriptors you don't want to explicitly uh, pass to your child process is the best uh, and only way to do it in a um, multi-threaded process yeah yeah Cool. All right. Let's Any more homework for Dave? <laughs> That's enough. Stop, stop. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
Go ahead, Jan. So the easy to use part is there's also this uh, kernel module I would like to see move from a port into base or just made a default component of a jail system so that you get def CTL events for jail state changes. Mm. Uh, the module is, uh, let me check how it's called. Yeah, you've looked that up several times. You keep bringing that yeah. up for good reason. Yep. The, right now the package is this here and then devd can basically forward the notification for jail events the problem is that like all things with devd it is the sole consumer of all events and has to know about mm -hmm. all subscribers yeah at least if you want it to be reliable uh, this is already there in the list, Dave, I added is it. Is it? You did. Good, man. Okay, fine. No need to put it in. Oh, uh, it isn't I Dave, always isn't it? default to redundancy. <laughs> yeah, good. I already put it in. And... Good, good, good. Can I have something I propose this for you? Uh, and, is it and... for the group or should we wait till after? I can hang around oh. if we've covered all our broad topics. Well, it's for the group. Well, I would like to know how to be more secure when programming. And one thing is uh, capsicumizing. So if you want to um, capsicumize your process, but still be able to do everything, let's say it like that, you will probably... <laughs> Fork it's impossible process. by design. No, no, no. I mean, you will fork a process before you enter capability mode. So your oh, yes. file process is going to have all the rights. What I'm thinking of, let's say we got the commise jail mm -hmm. and or some demon that we're talking about, um, then we will have to be able to jail exec, which actually need all the capabilities. Uh, so my question is, what is the best way to communicate between two processes that are like uh, capsicumized and uncapsicumized child process? What, what would be the, the best thing? So because capsicum has a theoretically sound design, uh, there is no such thing as decapsicumizing at something. So once you're in capability mode, you can't get out. Yeah, I know that. But Unless if there's a conflict early. by design. So you can't leave the capability mode. You can only talk to a process which has never entered it. And the most common way to do that is to badly st start your process and then fork a child process and do almost everything in there. And that child process is the one in the sandbox. And it keeps the connection normally over a unique socket pair uh, to the parent process. And the parent process speaks a very restrictive um, protocol over the pre-established socket connection to make some changes on the host and basically it would only make sure that this is one of the few things I'm supposed to be doing with my uh, elevated privileges or the other way is to have it create a file descriptor and send it to you. Um, okay, but my question is, does it have to be a Unix socket? Uh, I mean, what, what's the best way for that communication to happen? I know the rest. Everything you said is perfectly correct. But my question is specifically, does it have to be a Unix socket? Is there something better? Or uh, what should I watch I for? So and yeah, lists so... aren't magic. They still have to have a medium to uh, move across. That can be a socket. And the advantage of using Unix socket is that's the only way uh, you can uh, send file descriptors instead of just messages with plain text bytes across process boundaries. 
Uh, other ways you can just send data are pipes, which can be easier for some things and harder for other things. Um, if you want to have your protocol handling code as easy as possible, I would use sequential packet Unix sockets because then you don't have to worry about uh, message boundaries because every send or receive system call produces or consumes a complete message instead of uh, a stream or a packet in an unordered um, communication. So that's the easiest way I know how to do it. Does that answer uh, your question? Other things yes. you can do is set up a shared memory before and then uh, have your own ring buffers in shared memory. You could use a TCP connection. You could use files uh, or POSIX message search queues. And there may even be other things I haven't thought about. So, but uh, Unix socket already pre-connected using the socket pair system call is the canonical way. So, okay, I got my homework. Well, who doesn't have this... homework? <laughs> we've, we've given yeah, out quite a bit is... in the last hour. Mine is hacking along on the state notification daemon. Pocket pair two. Thank you for. So the nice thing about this is that it doesn't require file system access to bind a socket. Instead, you get just both ends of a connected pair of sockets, similar to the pipe two system call. Just that it gives you two sockets, and you can basically pick what you want. So uh, you could have it create a pair of pre-connected TCP sockets, or in this case, I would probably go with sequential packet Unix sockets because that's the easiest to write again code for. Is there a man page for it? For Unix sockets? Yes, man for Unix. Yeah, but the, the sequential ones, is, is it the they same man page? A special one they're covered uh, in the generic uh, Unix socket man page. And the rest is just what POSIX has specified. It's so basically it's not FreeBSD specific. It's just basically sequential packet sockets behave like stream sockets, just that the message boundaries are preserved. Every time you send a message, the reader will receive the exact same message instead of a number of bytes, which is nice because then you don't have to write a parser which can uh, resynchronize. You don't have to pass byte by byte, but you know that every time you will have a full message. So you can do things like just cast the buffer to a struct pointer and start using it. Okay, thanks. Uh, you can't, uh, for uh, NV lists, if you want to use just libnv to communicate, you have to use a stream socket uh, because uh, of how they implemented file descriptor passing. So they have already done the hard part of writing a parser which works on a stream of bytes and out of bound uh, past file descriptors so that you can just, for example, send an array of file descriptors as a, a NV list over a Unix socket. And that's the easiest way because doing the file descriptor passing correctly so that it works on all CPU architectures with different alignments and so on, on and across a different operating system is just so annoying. The API is ugly. But it's the stand, it's standardized interface, and yet that's just how it is. Okay, thanks. Mm. We're at one hour. Anything else that is pressing? I can stick around for a few random topics afterwards.
I'm good. We need, yeah, we need some hacking time. You. What's that? Sorry. We need some hacking time. I'm good. We just need some hacking time. Hacking now. time, indeed. Yeah. Okay, well, everyone, I'm going to officially call it at 11 a.m. Pacific, and I can okay. stick a little bit, and happy hacking. Cool. Jared, thanks.